Hello everyone myself Dr Parth Goswami and today I will teach you one of the important topic from kidney system that is the nephrotic syndrome So we will discuss about the definition etiology pathophysiology complication clinical features of nephrotic syndrome So let's begin this important topic in the detail So first of all what do we mean by nephrotic syndrome definition So this particular five group of clinical manifestation define the nephrotic syndrome. In the nephrotic syndrome the patient will have a massive or heavy protein urea means the protein will be lost in the urine and it is a very severe form of protein urea means the patient can have greater than 3.5 g of protein loss in a 24 hour. So you can imagine that there is a so much loss of protein in the urine in the nephrotic syndrome more than 3.5 g in the 24 hour so obviously because of that because the protein get excreted in the urine the blood level of protein particularly albumin will get decrease so in the blood protein will decrease which is known by the name hypoproteinemia or hypoalbuminemia right the main protein that is that is lost in urine is albumin that's why hypoalbuminemia manifest first now because of these two condition because of hypoalbuminemia because of less protein in the urine the patient oncotic pressure will get decrease right oncotic pressure decrease and that's why the patient will develop edema swelling over the body in the nephrotic syndrome the patient can have hyperlipidemia I will explain the mechanism later on in the slide why hyperlipidemia occurs. And excessive lipid this hyperlipidemia right excessive lipid will get excreted in the urine so patient can have lipid urea as well the loss of lipid in the urine. So this five group of clinical manifestation define the nephrotic syndrome. Now let's understand the pathophysiology of each clinical manifestation in the detail. So first of all pathophysiology of massive protein urea. Why protein urea occurs? Why nephrotic range protein urea? So we know very well that in the nephrotic syndrome the glomerular capillaries get damaged. So there will be leakage of plasma protein from the blood into the urine, right? The plasma protein will get leak and so because of that right because of damage to the capillary the protein can be leak from the blood into the glomerulus and ultimately into the urine so that is the reason for development of protein urea main reason now what happened because of capillary damage initially only because initially the damage is less right so initially only low molecular weight protein excreted in the urine like that of albumin initially only albumin is lost but later on in the disease immunoglobulin like high molecular weight protein also can be lost in the urine right and you have to remember friends that if you have asked in the exam that which is the major protein that is lost in urine then the answer is albumin right the major protein lost in urine is albumin and that's why the patient manifest as a hypoalbuminemia all right now the protein urea could be of two variety as we have discussed initially albumin and then uh, other proteins right so if only low molecular weight protein is lost in the urine right if only low molecular weight protein leak through the glomerulus and present in the urine for example albumin if only albumin urea is present then it is known by the name highly selective protein urea and the example is minimal chain disease type of nephrotic syndrome but later on in the disease along with high molecular weight low molecular weight protein sorry high molecular weight protein also get lost in the urine like that of immunoglobulin which is known by the name non selective protein urea so if albumin is lost it is known as highly selective protein urea and if all the proteins are lost then it is non selective protein urea all right now why edema occurs in the nephrotic syndrome so as we have discussed friends the reason is simple the main reason is that the protein is lost in the urine patient will have protein urea right because of capillary damage because of capillary damage protein get leak in the urine 
so because of protein urea because of low stuff albumin in the urine the plasma albumin level will fall down because of that there will be decrease oncotic pressure and so the patient will have edema formation whenever oncotic pressure decrease the patient can form edema the patient will complain of swelling you can see that here the child is having periorbital swelling while here there is a leg edema right this is a pitting type of edema you can see a pit here after compression all right the second reason for the edema formation is that because of capillary damage the plasma will get excreted in the urine right plasma get leak into the glomerulus so because of decrease in the plasma volume there will be reduction of gfr glomerular filtration rate will be reduced and when the gfr decrease the sensor will get activated and compensatory aldosterone secretion will get increase and this aldosterone will lead to sodium and water retention right so because of that patient can develop edema all right now what is the characteristic of edema how the edema looks like so this is the characteristic the edema is generalized which is known by the name anasarca initially the patient will have edema in the periorbital region that there is a marked edema in the periorbital region but it is seen as a generalized it can be seen in the leg as well or in the whole over the body the edema is soft and pitting variety in the severe case pleural effusion and ascites also can develop right pleural effusion means collection of fluid in the pleural cavity and ascites means the collection of fluid in the peritoneal cavity of abdomen all right now pathophysiology of hyperlipidemia why hyperlipidemia occurs so friends the hyperlipidemia is due to mainly the three reason the one reason is that there is a increased lipoprotein synthesis in the liver second reason is that the lipid catabolism in the liver will get decrease and third reason is that there is a abnormal transport of circulating circulating lipid in the blood that the transport is defective and the catabolism is defective right and if patient is have hyperlipidemia high lipid in the blood then obviously it will get excreted in the urine which is known by the name lipid urea so the patient can have lipid urea also because of hyperlipidemia now i will explain why there is a increased lipoprotein synthesis in the liver so one hypothesis say that the nephrotic syndrome patient is having the protein urea complaint right protein is get excreted in the urine so obviously liver have to make more proteins more plasma proteins so in the stress of making more and more protein there is also compensatory increased synthesis of lipoprotein by defect understand so it's hypothesized that whenever the liver face the stress of massive protein synthesis in response to protein urea there will be also increased synthesis of lipoprotein so that's the reason why hyperlipidemia is present in nephrotic syndrome and particularly the bad lipids are increased like that of total lipid cholesterol triglyceride vldl and ldl the good lipid that is hdl will get decreased so that's why the patient can develop uh, you know hypercoagulability or hypercoagulability in such a nephrotic syndrome that's because of hyperlipidemia we will see it in detail in the later on in the slide so these are the etiology of nephrotic syndrome the causes could be of two type one is primary and second one is systemic primary means the disease is present in the glomerulus in the kidney itself while the secondary is due to some systemic disease so which are the example of primary glomerular disease induced nephrotic syndrome so the primary nephrotic syndrome could be minimal change disease which is common in child then membranous nephropathy then focal segmental glomerulosclerosis then membrane of proliferative glomerulonephritis and the iga nephropathy these five are the common example of nephrotic syndrome now which are the example of systemic disease that lead to nephrotic syndrome so the most common example is diabetes then amyloidosis then systemic lupus erythematosus sle then certain drugs like that of nsaids penicillamine heroin etc then infection like that of malaria syphilis hepatitis b c and hiv all that can lead to nephrotic syndrome 
The malignancy also can be the cause of nephrotic syndrome like that of carcinoma and lymphoma. And sometimes the miscellaneous cause include allergy, hereditary nephritis and the bee bite. So these all are the etiology of nephrotic syndrome. Now let's see some of the complication of nephrotic syndrome if not treated. So see friends here the patient is mainly having hyperlipidemia right. First of all edema is all obviously inconvenient to the patient right. The patient will have hyperlipidemia as well. So what happened now because of hyperlipidemia the patient is at more risk for the development of thrombosis right the patient can have hypercoagulability the second reason for development uh, increased coagulation in the blood is that the anticoagulant particularly antithrombin 3 and the antiplasmin will get lost in the urine right the capillary is leaky so antithrombin 3 and the antiplasmin like anticoagulant protein will also get excreted in the urine and so the chance of coagulation increases in the patient of nephrotic syndrome there is also decreased fibrinolysis there is also increased platelet aggregation and altered level of protein c and s these three reasons also can contribute in the development of coagulation so that's uh, that's why the patient will at more risk for the development of coagula coagul coagulation disorder right and obviously whenever there is a more coagulation whenever the blood clot is formed it is known as a thrombosis a patient can develop thrombosis as well which can detach from the blood vessel it can circulate in the blood and thromboembolism also can be developed and because of thrombosis the blood supply to the heart brain etc can get reduced mesenteric artery right if the blood supply is reduced then this particular organ can develop infarction right the coagulative necrosis because of less blood supply is known by the name infarction so the patient can develop infarction in many organs now we know that immunoglobulins later on in the nephrotic syndrome immunoglobulins also lost in the urine and immunoglobulin is uh, you know help in providing the immunity so whenever it's lost uh, patient can develop variety of infection like that of staphylococci or pneumococcal infections patient can develop pneumonia as well understand all right so these are the complications hypercoagulability then thrombosis thromboembolism and infections these two are the main golden point that has to be remembered in the nephrotic syndrome if you have asked that which is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in the children then your answer should be minimal change disease and the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in the adult is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis after which the common cause is membranous nephrotic syndrome right so always remember these golden points so friends thank you very much this is all about the nephrotic syndrome right in our subsequent next lecture i will discuss uh, each type of nephrotic syndrome in the detail right we will discuss about the minimal change disease membranous nephropathy iga nephropathy all ne type of nephrotic syndrome in the detail this is just the overview of nephrotic syndrome right we will discuss uh, all this nephrotic syndrome in the detail in our subsequent lecture and again i am telling don't remember uh, don't forget you know uh, the definition of nephrotic syndrome the is a group of clinical manifestation of five symptoms, right? These five clinical manifestation define the nephrotic syndrome. Don't forget it. The patient will have heavy protein urea means more than 3.5 gram protein loss in a 24 hours, right? It is known as a nephrotic range protein urea. Because of that patient will have hypoalbuminemia. So the patient will have edema and also there is a complaint of also there is a presence of hyperlipidemia and lipiduria in the nephrotic syndrome. So this is all about the nephrotic syndrome. See you soon in the next lecture. Till then take care and bye bye.